I'm really excited about these two weeks uh, as well. They're, they're a neat teaching. This is one of my favorite stories in the Bible because it's just, it affects science. And, and this is one of those things that we just sometimes can't understand. Uh, but it's one of those things that kind of, if you're a Christian, God said it, so I got to believe it, right? Right. Okay. So we've got to kind of deal with this. And so, um, it demonstrates, it demonstrates how powerful God is, but it's also kind of, it's also, if you look at it, the story of, of my life, it's, it can be the story of your life. In fact, it's the story of this church's life. It's the story of, of many other churches' lives. Um, and I believe that the kind of faith that I'm going to be sharing with you today, um, is going to be, ah, it's going to challenge you. It's going to challenge you and your family. It's going to challenge your career, your health, um, whatever ministry you're a part of. I believe, um, that prayers are not reserved for super Christian people or professional pastors. Um, I believe that every single follower of Christ can experience the kind of supernatural move that, uh, of God that I'm going to describe to you today from Joshua. So before we get there, I kind of want to engage your spirit just a little bit. Um, there is something today that God is calling you to reach for. There is something today that, that God is asking you to try and just reach out and grab. Remember a few weeks ago, if you were here, we talked about having a word and something that will direct our year. We're past those teachings, but I want to keep referencing that and bringing it to mind because I can, if you've gotten your word, God is, God is trying to tell you there's something for you to reach for. There's, there's something there that, that he's putting in front of you that, that you are going to desire, that you're passionate about. For some of you, that's, that's reconciliation with either a family member, with a coworker, uh, with a, a longtime friend. Um, there might be reconciliation that you need to find. For others, you're trying to find purpose. You're trying to find what, what you're here for. Some of you are battling depression and you need the joy of the Lord to come into your life in a big way today. Uh, some of you are concerned about friends who, who uh, don't love Jesus as much as, um, as they did. They haven't accepted Him as, as Lord of their lives. And some of you are simply just feeling distant from God this morning. My prayer since Wednesday this week has been um, that the Holy Spirit would speak to you as I speak to you today. And not just charge you up and get you emotionally excited, but the Holy Spirit would inspire you to a sun stand still kind of faith. You're going to understand what that means in a second. You see, I don't, I don't believe that Jesus saved us to survive this world, Right? I don't believe that Jesus came to the world to just kind of give us a hope so that we could come to church every week, get charged up, go back out in the world next week, get beat up, come back to church, get charged up, and begin the cyclical cycle, right? There's no reason for that. There's, there's no point in that. What I believe that Jesus saved us to is to change this world for His glory. Amen? We're here to change this world for His glory. We're not here to be stuck in this cycle to just survive day in, day, day in and day out. I see too many believers, too many Christians, too many people who love God, who have settled into a comfortable complacency and have been lulled into low expectations. But the kind of faith that I want to talk to you about today, a sun stands still kind of faith, believes God for the impossible as an ordinary way of life. And I believe it's available to you today. So if you are in Joshua chapter 10, and we're going to start at verse 7, I'm going to be reading out of the ESV uh, version of the Bible. So it may sound a little bit different if you were using an NIV or King James or something, but um, they were translated from the same, same language. It says, So Joshua went up from Gilgal, he and all the people of war with him, and all the mighty men of valor. And the Lord said to Joshua, Do not fear them, for I have given them into your hands. Not a man of them shall stand before you. And so, in that, in that verse, what I find very interesting, and, and this is, I get distracted when I read the Bible sometimes. Um, anybody with me? Yeah, okay. Uh, for whatever reason. It might be just because I don't understand something. It might be because I got some other thing preoccupying my mind. Sometimes there's words in here, though, that you go, why did he say that? Why is it like that? And in verse 8, you say, God says, I have given them into your hands. So God's speaking to Joshua and issues a promise. He says, I have given them into your hands. He's, he's speaking as if the war is already over. He's speaking as if it's already over, but the war hasn't even started for Joshua. You see, from Joshua's point of view, it has yet to begin. He hasn't, even, he hasn't drawn his sword yet. But you know what that tells us? It's something pretty exciting. I want you to hear this. You serve a God. You serve a God. who speaks about the battles that you're presently fighting in the past 
tents. Think about that. You serve a God who speaks about the battles that you're presently facing or going to face tomorrow. He speaks about those in the past tense. Because from His vantage point, those battles are already won because Jesus is already victorious. And so in Joshua 10, verse 9, So Joshua came, up then, came upon them suddenly, having marched up all night from Gilgal, and the Lord threw them into a panic before Israel, who struck them with a great blow at Gibeon. He chased them by the way of the ascent of, of Beth Haran and struck them as far as Azekah as and Makeda. And as they fled before Israel, while they were going down the ascent at Beth Horon, the Lord threw down large stones from heaven on them as far as Azekah, and they died. There were more who died because of the hailstones than the sons of Israel killed with the sword. Isn't that awesome? I mean, if you're a guy, isn't that awesome? <laughs> That's like a war story. And like God comes through right in the end and just like, you know, it is the storm happens and you're just like, yeah, all right. You're just rooting for the hero. And, uh, and I think that's, that's really cool. And, and verse 12, um, uh, well, let me back up. God, I think this shows that God can do more. Um, he can do more in a moment of favor than you can do in a lifetime of trying to do it your own way, right? I mean, hailstones just come out and they cover miles and you've got a sword, you can only cover five inches, you know. I mean, that's, that's the way it works. And so in verse 12, it's the icing on the cake because it's the way I want to live. It's, it's, the way, uh, it's the way I want to challenge all of us to live and pray for, for over the next two weeks as we're teaching this and, and hopefully for the rest of our lifetimes. But in verse 12, it says, At the time, Joshua spoke to the Lord in the day and when the Lord gave the Amorites over to the sons of Israel, and he said in the sight of Israel, okay, here it is, here's, here's awesome stuff right here. He says, sun stand still at Gibeon and moon in the valley of, of Ajalon. In, verse, in, in, in 12 words, in 12 words, one man's faith, because of the promises of God, caused a cosmic change. It changed the way the universe operated for one day. Because of one man's faith. It wasn't a very long prayer. It wasn't an eloquent prayer. But watch what God did in response to the faith of one man named Joshua. It says, And the sun stood still and the moon stopped until the nation took vengeance on their enemies. Is this not written in the book of Jashar? The sun stopped in the midst of heaven and did not hurry to set for about a whole day. There has been no day like it before or since when the Lord heeded the voice of a man for the Lord fought for Israel. That's cool, isn't it? I think that's really neat. I know that, bef I know that never before and never since the sun stood still uh, as the sky did in the sky as it did for Joshua. However, I believe that the same God who, who made the sun stand still for Joshua in the same way... Um, the same God has that, has that capability and capacity to raise His only Son from the dead. He longs to show Himself strong in the life of every man, woman, and child anywhere in the world who will call on His name and believe in Him boldly to do the impossible so that He can receive the glory through our lives. There was no doubt in the mind of this author that the Lord was fighting for Israel. Like, don't you want that in your life? Don't, don't you want like that beyond a shadow of a doubt assurance that the Lord is fighting for you in your life? Seeing things come together and saying there's no one else in the world who could have pulled that off except for God. I want people to look at my life. I want people to look at my church. I want people to look at my brothers and sisters in Christ. I want, that, I want them to say, surely the Lord is fighting for them. Amen? Amen. That's the way we want to live. I want God to do such enormous things through my life and your life, through this church and the churches that are, that are all across this world, churches down the road. I want people to look at us and size us up and compare it to what it should have happened based on natural ability and go, whoa, only God could do that. Here's the thing. To some degree, I've seen the sun stand still. Not physically. But when I was about 15 years old, God caught a group of, of stereotypical teenagers on fire 
and started a prayer revolution that led, some, led to some incredible things in our schools and our local churches. In three years of youth ministry, a small group of adults mentored teenagers who are now dispersed among other churches, among other cities. And some are, are still serving in the church and some are now missionaries traveling to Haiti and doing some other things, sharing their faith. There's a young lady sitting right here in the front row who came to our church just as we were getting going in kind of a, a desperate cry for help. She was very angry. And today there's a calm and a trust because of this church's involvement in her life. There's a man sitting in the back over there that fell off a roof that doctor said should, he couldn't have survived or shouldn't have survived, let alone be up and about walking, talking, and being able to start his own business here. But I prayed a sun stand still prayer next to him in his bed, and I know many of you were joining us in those prayers, and he defied all odds back there. The Scripture says that there wasn't a day like it, like that day that the sun stood still in the sky, before or since. And that's true for the time that that was written. But there was one other time that it happened in the Scriptures because the Bible says that on the day that Jesus died, the sky grew black and He breathed His last breath and He cried out, My God, My God, why have You forsaken Me? And the God of the universe intervened and stepped through time and space and made salvation possible to everyone who believed in the name of the Lord. So if you've been saved by the grace of God, you've received forgiveness of your sins, you've been raised to life with Christ, and you've seen the sun sand still as well. And you are, live, you are a living example that God can do anything. So here's the thing. There are some people in this room that for whatever reason you just don't believe God can handle certain situations. I've been there. All right? There are things in our lives that we struggle with that we sometimes screw up for ourselves, right? And we just go, there's no way that I'm going to get out of this. One of my favorite passages, though, is in Ephesians 3, 20 through 21 that tells us that, by, uh, that through the power of Jesus Christ, God can do far more than anything that we can ever ask or imagine as long as it's for God's glory. And I'm not just telling you because I've seen it, I'm telling you because it's what God says. So don't write me off because we're in church or because I'm a pastor, because I'm a young guy and I haven't lived life yet. I don't care what it is. I want you to know that I come with the authority of God today. I come with the authority of His Word. And if God said it, I believe it. Amen? Amen. All right. So you know what this means, is that God can handle your biggest problems and your greatest regrets. The thing about Joshua was that he got himself into trouble. Joshua made a mistake. All right, if you go back into chapter 9 and read a little bit earlier, and a little, and earlier in chapter 10, Joshua kind of made an alliance with some people that he was supposed to take out, that he was supposed to go to war with. And so he regrets doing what he knew he shouldn't have done, and he needs God to get him out of a situation that he got himself into. Anyone else ever been there? Right. We've been there before. Um, has anyone in this room ever needed God to get you out of a situation that you've gotten yourself into? Yes, we all have. And so, God, I've created so much debt, but I want to get my life in order so that I can be generous and do this the, your way. God, I need a sun stand still faith today in order to make that happen. God, I've married this person. Don't look at your spouse. Um, <laughs> And I don't know what to do about it because I know I'm not supposed to get a divorce. I know I'm not supposed to do all these things, but I can't stand it anymore, right? All right, God, it's not going so well, but I need you to bless. I need you to bless this marriage. By the way, those comments are in no way reflection of my relationship with my wife over there. So <laughs> you don't need to come up to us and be like, is there anything we need to talk about? Okay, we're good. <laughs> Positive. We're We're good. <laughs> oh, God, I haven't been the parent I needed to be, and now my kids are far away from you, and I need you to bring them back. God, I can't find ha joy or happiness on my own. I've been trying on my own for so long, and I need, I need you to come into my life in a powerful and undeniable way. 
See, if you've ever gotten yourself into a situation that you needed God to get you out of, you can relate to Joshua because God is able to turn your mistake into a miracle. And so Joshua, what's happening is he's fighting this enemy, and even though he's outnumbered, he sees God show up in this giant way. Uh, but just as he's about to claim victory, the sun starts going down in the distance, and, but the battle's not over yet. The battle's not finished. It's not even won yet. And and if the sun goes all the way down, the enemy is able to get away. They don't have flashlights. They don't have cell phone lights. They don't have floodlights to continue a battle in the middle of the day. They don't even have night vision goggles, for crying out loud. they got bows and arrows and swords. And so if this happens, then they get away and people are able to stand against him. But Joshua remembers what God said. That God said that not one of his enemies is supposed to stand against him. That he is supposed to occupy this entire world promised land. And so Joshua, in a moment of desperation, prays something that he's never prayed before, that he's never seen anyone pray before. But what other choice does he have? What other choice does he have? So out loud, he says this, in the presence of a whole nation, sun stand still! And God responds. And God responds. He puts it all on the line and God responds now here's what's awesome about this there's there's lots that is awesome about this but we now know that this isn't even the correct thing to ask right like the sun doesn't orbit the earth the earth orbits the sun the sun is stationary from what we can tell other than maybe flying around a bigger whatever galaxy going on I wasn't great in science um but uh I do know that the, the earth moves not the sun um but it wasn't the right, the right thing to say, was it? It should have been earth stands still instead of sun stands still. But, but that's okay because even though he got the prayer wrong, God still responded. He wasn't, God wasn't even insulted that he got it wrong. He wasn't even insulted that it was just a gigantic request. Like God, alter the laws of, of nature so that we can accomplish what you've promised us to do. I would be like, God, can you lessen gravity a little bit so the scale numbers go down just a tad, right? That's kind of what we're talking about him saying and doing, right? <laughs> wouldn't make me look any different it just made me feel better um <laughs> but he puts it all on the line and god responds here's another thing that's off we you know we just we know that we should like ask god for bigger things like i, I on mondays i work with i work with craig turner sitting over there he he does science if you don't know that he has a science science shop in lapeer and um he's he's been uh 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 generous enough to offer me um i couldn't think of the word it was like <laughs> uh, he's been generous enough to allow me to work there on mondays for a little extra supplementary cash and we have a good time um just just hanging out we meet awesome people and um and craig i have a lot to learn from craig but um we start every monday morning with prayer and uh and if, if there's been i think one time that we weren't able to and like we had to pause in the middle of the day and say we got we got to we got to do this because it's not going well today and so we start every morning with prayer and and we pray for the sick we pray for his business we pray for the church we pray for things that are on our hearts with our families or whatever um, we just take some time to talk about things and then we pray for a few minutes and something that i often pray is god be in the back of my be in the back of our minds today and let us recognize opportunities to advance your gospel for this day and this week i was challenged by what joshua has prayed because i'm asking god to be in the back of my mind like god be on the back burner of my mind, like, I am bothered that I've said that or that I've thought that. Do you, do you follow what I'm saying here? I, uh, uh, that's like not a big prayer at all. Like, God, I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of like, you know, this is more important today. So if you got something that you need me to do, let me know. But I'm just going to go back to the computer and draw uh, and, and do all this other stuff, you know. And I kind of feel dumb. I'll admit that. I feel convicted. I feel dumb about some of my, some of my prayers. That... That's not relying on what God's promises are, right? That's not like having any expectations that God will do anything for His kingdom through me today. That's like, hey, if there's a little interruption or a little scuffle going on over here, let me, I, can, I can be here to intervene for it, God. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll be your sidekick today. So you know what I'm going to pray tomorrow if we don't get snowed in? You know what I'm going to pray tomorrow? Ready for this? God, I hope Craig doesn't make any money today because I hope you'll flood the doors with people who need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. (laughs) 
Isn't that a big prayer? God's going to take care of the money. He's going to take care of all that stuff coming in. He's going to take care of those things. What we need to do is be focused on advancing the gospel first and primary, right? We need to serve God. We need to bring Him glory. With what our work, we need to bring Him glory. With what we do in our lives, we need to bring Him glory. With what we're thinking about, we need to bring Him glory. With what we do in our lives, we need to bring Him glory in everything and in big ways. You see, um, some of us pray really silly prayers. Some of us think that that God's going to be inconvenienced by our lives and our requests and that we've, we've gotten into this habit of, of this. Some of us think that our prayers are simply for physical healing and that's awesome. I'm so glad that we pray for one another because we've seen miracles happen. We've seen things happen. But it doesn't stop there. What about those who are sick spiritually who don't know who Jesus Christ is? All right? How, what, what about... For this church and for the greater worldwide church, I would love it if a group would come early on Sundays and begin praying for this room, praying for the people that would be sitting in those chairs, for people that would be joining us for worship in the morning. God, let their ears be able to hear. Let their minds be able to receive. Let the, let the Spirit convict people who need to be convicted and let life change happen in this hour and 15 minutes that we're together worshiping you. I would love it if a group of people would surround me or whoever is bringing the message in the morning and pray for us. I, that they would pray for our worship team. That they would pray for our children's teachers. And so that when we pray, we ask for boldness. We don't pray if it be thy will or if it is your will because that's kind of giving God a cop-out, right? A little bit. Like, God, if you want to do this, it's all good. Like, I, you know, I don't know if you have time. Like, because I do this to people. I'll ask them to do something, and I don't know why it's this weird insecure nature of mine, but I'll ask somebody to do something. I'll be like, well, if you don't have time or, you know, if you, if you want to do this. If I am bold enough to ask you, I should just not apologize for it, right? That's the way it should work, right? Okay, and you have the opportunity to say no. I shouldn't give you more of a cop-out to be able to say no, right? Yeah, okay, so, so you're dealing with this, and... And I struggle with this myself, but, but what we're meaning to say when we say, if it's, God, if it's your will that this happens, we're meaning to say, God, not my will, but yours be done. Right? Like, that's our intention, and it's okay if we, if we say that, but that should be our intention. Like, God, not my will, but yours be done. But let's get to the point where we're always walking side by side with God and that we know what God's will is. Let's not continue in our prayers, God, if it be your will, not knowing what God's will actually is. Let's find out what God's will is. Let's stand upon His promises and then pray boldly based upon those promises and what God wants to see happen because He's already revealed most, much of His will to us in His Word. Right? Okay. You see, Joshua knew what God wanted. None of Joshua's enemies were, were to stand against him. That's what God said. None of your enemies shall stand against you. God didn't make the sun stand still because Joshua said, God, be in the back of my mind today. Or, Lord, uh, if it be your will, Joshua got bold enough to say, Lord, I know your promises, and according to those promises, I need you to do something right now, and I'm going to pray it boldly and i think that's the greatest humility that anyone can demonstrate is that when you put yourself in a position where if god doesn't come through you're going to look pretty silly that's pretty humble don't you think that's not do 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 i'm going to come in for a rescue today right that is that is my reputation's on the line like people are not going to talk to me if i do this kind of a thing only god only you can do that that's humility. And so I'm wondering today, I'm wondering if you'll be bold enough to, today to admit that, you, that there's a need in your heart. That in your family, maybe in your finances, and say, God, only you, only you can do this. Would you make the sun stand still? I know it seems impossible, but our God is a God of impossible. And I heard another pastor say this, and I want to share it with you today because I think it's, I think it's huge. What you ask God for is a direct reflection of what you believe about his capability, about his capacity, about his character, and about his nature. Like, if you don't think I'm very smart, you're not going to come up to me and ask me about Einstein and, and different things, right? As soon as I got the title of minister... Six years ago, I had people coming to me that would never talk to me before and dump their life story in my hands. I'm okay with that. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. But what they believed about me changed their actions towards me, right? 
What you believe about people will change your actions towards those people. What you believe about your God will change. It will influence how you act out your faith and what you ask for. And so what you ask God for is a direct reflection of what you believe about His capability, His capacity, His character, and His nature. So what stand, sun stand still prayer do you need to pray today? What impossible thing is God wanting to do through your life today? And will you be bold enough to pray that? Now, I hope you will, but I want you to hear one last thing because I love messages like this. I love charging people up. I love hearing the amens and the laughs and everything like that. I love doing that. But, but there's, there's also one other thing I want to notice and I want you to notice. And, and, and it, it's although that, that God gave the victory to Joshua, Joshua still had to fight the battle. He still had to get dirty. He still had to put some effort into it, right? He had to be willing to march forward. And the Bible says that not only did Joshua pray that the sun would stand still, but that he was willing to march all night to fight the battle. So listen to me. If you are going to pray that God would make the sun stand still, you better be ready to march all night long. Not so you can earn God's love. It's not, look at God, I'm putting in effort, so love me or, or accept me. Because you can never earn His love. It's not that so you can merit His favor or, or grace in your life. There's nothing that you could do that would ever accomplish or achieve that. But God is always going to involve your faith and your works before He supernaturally brings His grace into your situation. It's the way that He's chosen to do it. And so if you want to see change, you have to be a part of the change. And that's the reason that I went into ministry. I wanted to see people in my community move from, from punching the Sunday morning time clock to being passionate followers of Jesus Christ. And I discovered that I could use words to help cultivate that passion. If your finances are on your mind this morning, you've got to be willing to march ahead in faith that God's going to rescue you. If you have a conflict in your family you need reconciliation, you've got to march in with an olive branch and be willing to talk it out. You see, when you begin to march forward in faith, you will find that the Holy Spirit is sustaining you and empowering you to do for God what you presumed to be an impossible mess that no one else would want to rescue you from. You see, my God is able to do more than you can ever ask or imagine according to the power that is at work within us. And to Him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen.